Jeremiah chapter 31. At the same time, saith the Lord, Will I be the God of all the families of Israel? It's not like he's giving up to give up them to me. And they shall be my people. It doesn't sound like he's giving them up to me. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword, the war, found grace in the wilderness. Even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. So God's love is set upon one particular nation. Again, I will build thee. Again, I will build thee. He built them at the start. Going to tear them down. Again, I'm going to build thee. That means he's going to do it again. And thou shalt be built. Shall. That's, that's future. They're already built. They're destroying themselves. It's like, you know, like in Israel to a mouthful of teeth. Well, they're not brushing themselves. They're not cleaning themselves. So the, the sin and the decay is just, you know, the teeth are getting worn down. They're falling out. They're cracking. They're turning black. They're, they're, they're falling out of the mouth. They're broken. And then God, being a dentist, he goes in there and drills and pulls and makes molds and gives him a new set of teeth. O virgin of Israel, thou shalt again be adored, adorned with thy tablets, musical instrument. Shall go forth in the dances of joy. You don't dance when you're sad of them that make merry. So there's rejoicing to come. Israel's future relies all upon the God's word. What Israel will be relies on what God has said. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria you know, for fruit. The planters shall plant and shall eat them as common things. There's going to be so plenty of some fruit. You know, just like every day then. For there shall be a day, not in that day, there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. What does that sound like? You jumped yourself into the millennium. For thus saith the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob. Well, who's going to sing for gladness for Jacob today? The only gladness that they would sing if they can destroy Jacob. And shout among the chief of the nations. Publish ye. Well, there, there's a thing for the newspapers in the book market. Publish the gladness of Jacob. Praise ye. And say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. So we're going back to a bunch of people who are being chastised and save the redmen. They're calling out. They're reaching out. Behold, I will bring them from the north country. Right? This is that redmen. So we jumped out of the millennium and gathered them from the coast of the earth. And with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travailed with child together. And a great company shall return thither. This is what they're going to be coming back during Ezra and Nehemiah. And this is what they'll be coming back at the end of the tribulation period. They shall come with weeping and with supplications. Will I lead them? Will I lead them? I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way. When they come from Babylon to Jerusalem, that's not a straight way. Wherein they shall not stumble. You mean when Ezra and Nehemiah brought no one tripped? No one fell down? For I am a father to Israel. I wonder if anybody died on the way from Babylon to Jerusalem. Had to be. And Ephraim is my firstborn. Well, Ephraim has a big trouble with sin. One of the minor prophets speak about. And God's calling them back. Ephraim is a child of Joseph. 
his brothers is Manasseh. But Ephraim falls in a great sin. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations. Okay, this is us. Here we are. And declare it in the isles far off. And I don't know what those isles are. Note it says coast. That really helps me a lot. He that scattereth Israel, and he has, will gather him and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. John chapter 10. Don't marvel and joy because Israel is scattered and all over the place. Don't say that God's all finished with them. Because he'll gather them back up. All 100 of them. And I'm using that from John, you know, the Gospel of John. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. There's Zion again. And shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord. For wheat, and for wine, and for oil, and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden, green, flowery, smelling good, insects. And they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance. Both young men and old together, for I will turn their mourning into joy. Second Advent. And will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate, fill, satisfy, make full the soul of the priest with fatness. Oh, we've been talking about the priests as, as the wicked guys. And my people shall be satisfied with my goodness. So, you know, one of the things that people say, my goodness. You better be careful what you say. My goodness is God. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. You have no goodness, for there is none good. No, not one. Saith the Lord of hosts. Saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Now, we've jumped from the millennium to the tribulation to being carried away to Babylon. And coming back from Babylon... And we have right in the middle of the chapter, Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentations and bitter weeping. Rahal, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. Right in the middle of this thing, you see a prophecy of the second, I mean the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, when Rome wants to kill every baby to kill Jesus. After the Magi have come and gone. Like Pharaoh did in Egypt to kill all the babies, the, the male children. Right in the middle of it, we see the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. A young child, at least three years old. Minimum of three, I believe it is. Four or five. Thus saith the Lord, Refrain thy voice from weeping, and thy eyes from tears. For thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of their enemies. But when Rahel is weeping in Matthew 2, they are in the land. Jesus is in Bethlehem and moves in Nazareth. There is hope. In thy end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. So you see, we speak about Israel, that they're all out of the place. And right in the middle of being out of the place, you get the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what makes them not be out of the place? The Lord Jesus Christ. Why didn't they ever get right? Because they rejected Jesus Christ. So 70 A.D., guess what happened? It was all torn up again. And has not yet been redeemed. Has not yet been built. And there is hope in thy end, saith Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. How do you like that? 
they're still scattered. They're still in all the world. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastened me. Or chastised me. He acknowledges he's being beaten because of what he has done. What he has done wrong. That's repentance. And I was chastened, chastised. Oh, I want to throw the end in there. I was chastised as a bullet, unaccustomed to the yoke. You put a, a, a bull in a yoke that's never been to a yoke or that Pacific yoke, and you got to whip him. You got it because he ain't going to do what you want him to do because he doesn't know what to do. He's going to fight you, I would assume. I'm not a farmer. He's like, you take this bull and you put him an unknown yoke to him. And he, that's me. I'm unknown to the yoke of God. I've been yoked to the world. And Jesus comes and says, take my yoke for it's easy. No, no, no. I'd rather have the yoke of the Pharisees. Really? Do you really think that, you know, washing your hands and going so far on the Sabbath and blah, 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 blah. You know, that was a heavy burden. You know, it is said, I think there's 512 laws found in the Old Testament and what the Pharisees and all that have added. I've got the list somewhere. It's Mazuk, something like that. 512. I, that's amazing. That's a heavy yoke. You shall not wash your hands lest you eat. And thou can't take up thy bed. You can't go so far. Why are you rubbing grain between your fingers? Why don't your disciples fast and his disciples fast, but yours don't fast? Not Why are you sitting with sinners? Why, why, why? That's all the Pharisees get done doing with their rule. But did they obey? Turn thou me, and I will be turned. For thou art the Lord my God. I, I need direction. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. That's somebody who's repentant. That's somebody, you know, they just stop where they're going in life and say, where am I going? What am I doing? He stops wherever he is. He drops down on his knees and says, Lord, I need you. That's it. It's only you. And then from that, he gets up and goes where God tells him to go. And then when he gets up, he leaves a lot of junk where he was standing. Called sin. I mean, he may carry some of the sins. Yeah, we're all sinners. But a, not, a lot of iniquities and sins are left when he stands up and goes where God wants him to go. You know what a, a bull leaves out in the field when he's been working? That don't smell too good? That you don't want to step in? Surely. After that, I was turned. I repented. You turned them to Calvary in order to repent. You don't turn them to a church. You don't turn them to a pool. You don't turn them to works. You don't turn them to anywhere but Calvary. And after and after that, I was instructed. So God turns him the right direction. You know, somebody comes to like, I've had two incidents at the prison, and one guy last night who got saved three months ago, he turned to me how to witness, how, what, what's he supposed to do? God will turn them by a man of God in the Bible to show what the way are right. And then when he repents and gets right, he will turn to God and say, what do I do now? The guy told me, he says, I don't know how to witness. I said, yes, you do. He goes, no, I don't. I said, you told me your testimony, right? What God did to you to be saved. He goes, yeah. Tell people that. Stay in the Word. Read the Word. Stay in prayer. And God will have you to grow from there.
God don't expect you to know everything right away. And after that, I was instructed. I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed. It was smoked by the thigh. Like, oh. You know, how some people, you know, in America, we smack ourselves in the head. Not get a V8 instead of, oh, how stupid I was. I was ashamed. That's a mark of repentance. If you're not ashamed, God loves gay people too. You're not ashamed of being gay? No, we take great pride. You ain't saved. How dare you judge not least you be judged. Well, that's what the Bible says. Rather, I tell you what to be judged about. Rather, you judge your sins and rather being judged by God one day. This guy sought God for direction. He had no idea what he was doing. God turned him. He repented. He received the instruction. He became the shame. Yea, even confounded because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Oh, all that. I talked to another guy last night. I mean, he just. My past sins, they bothered me. I said, Are they under the blood? Well, yeah. You sure they're under the blood? He goes, Yeah. Well, keep them under the blood. If God don't remember, why should you? Is Ephraim my dear son? Loving. Loving God. I didn't finish. Loving. Loving God even in judgment. That's another mark of a growth of a Christian. When you're being chastised, when you're being corrected, you are being judged. You're like, God, you're not doing this because you hate me. You're doing it because you love me and help me to learn the lesson. So I don't do it again. Is he a pleasant child? Oh, no, all I'm saying, yeah, he's a lovely child. For since I spank against him, I do earnestly remember him still. See, God don't forget you when you... Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. That's God speaking. I will surely have mercy upon him, Ephraim, saith the Lord. I, I... You know, when you sin and you turn from God, you, you really sat in God. You make them upset. How much more when you've come to the saving knowledge of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God's dear beloved son, and do what you do. With the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. You imagine the Holy Spirit going up to God Almighty. When they, uh, are you doing the Holy Spirit? Doing fine, Almighty Lord God the Father. Jesus called him Father. What'd you do today? Do I really need to tell you? Yeah, I asked you. You don't know how many cigarettes I smoked today from them Christians. Really? I, I indwell in those Christians, and you won't believe the drinks they had me drink. The movies they took me in and, and witnessed. Well, how many people did you get to go and 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 uh, reveal their sin to them and and show the person the word of God and how? To... Very rarely. That grieves the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you got to come to the realization that what you do, what you think, what you are, everything about you. You are obligating the Holy Spirit that dwells in you to be doing what you're doing. You think he just goes and hides? You know, oh, oh, I want eternal security. I want God to dwell with me forever. And then you do the things you're doing. Well, you know, he hides in a little corner of my lung. He falls asleep while I do that. I, I mean, what, what are you thinking? Set thee up waymarks, make thee high heaps. Set thy heart toward the highway, even the way which thou wentest.
Turn again, repentance, O virgin of Israel. Turn again to these, to these thy cities. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding door? And the, the way marks, the high heaps, head for the highway. Man, I'm going to put everything out there to stop you from going where you're going. Get your eyes on that highway and get on the right road. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall come past a man. I don't know what that means. Is there going to be a point where there's going to be more women than men? You find that in the Bible. There's going to be women that are going to go up to a guy and say, We'll make our own meat. We'll break our own bread. But just let us be called by thy name. With Armageddon and all that, there will be a shortage of men. The tribulation period, there will be a shortage of men. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as yet they shall use this speech in the land of Judah and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. The Lord bless thee, O, o inhabitation of justice and mountain of holiness. Right? What well, that place is called today. Not with the dumb of the rock there. And there shall dwell in Judah itself. And in all the cities thereof together, husbandmen, you're going back to Adam. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were all shepherds. David was a shepherd. I think there was only one king of Judah mentioned for his husbandry. For I have situated or sagitated, that makes full, we already read that, the weary soul. I have replenished every sorrowful soul. Though upon this I awaken. Awaken? What's that thing about, say about Jesus? As a man awakened with, with redness of eyes and beheld. My sleep was sweet unto me. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of men and with the seed of beasts. Does that sound like God's done with Israel? You say, why do you keep saying that, Stiley? Because there are people out there saying God is all finished with Israel and the promises belong to our church or our people. Armstrongism, Catholicism, the morons over there in uh, the Western America. I mean, don't they have a city called Zion? They're stealing the blessings from, from Israel. And that is wrong. God says, I'm going to populate those Jews. There are people called skinheads who are against the Jews. The KKK is against one of the nationalities they're against are the Jews. The Germans were against the Jews. The Russians were against the Jews. The Romans were upset with the Jews. Egypt was upset with the Jews. And God says, of all those people that everyone hates, I'm going to fill the earth with them. It shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up. You know, you take it and pick it up. Pull it out of the ground. Been liking them to vines, figs, and to break down, and to throw down, and to destroy, and to afflict. Yes, those things are going to happen. So will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. What God is doing in his vineyard, what God is doing in his garden, is he's going through and removing the bad plants the weeds he is going in there taking everything that's not going to produce uh, fruit and he's breaking them up pulling them out grabbing them out and killing them so one day he'll have a garden of everything he's going to produce everything he wants in those days they shall say no more the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge you know what the fathers have done 
the children suffer. For everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set in it. You'll pay for your own sin. Don't you worry about your son. Don't you worry about the father. You worry about yourself. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 15 to 17. And with the house of Judah. Israel is already gone. And they don't really come back. So Jeremiah, when he says the house of Israel, that's They've been already captive. Syria's already come and gone and got them. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them out of the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Bible history. Which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, Hosea 2, 1 through 23, Isaiah 54, verse 5, Hosea 2, or it said 1 through 23, saith the Lord. My wife is the one that, Israel, they're the one that broke the covenant of marriage, not me. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. This is the one coming up. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. The law is coming back. And God's going to engrave it upon them. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me. You're not going to go one day, go knock on someone's door and say, I'm here to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. Saved you. you won't need that in the future. They're going to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. In order to give them that, that law and that new heart, he's got to remove their sin. Sin is what's standing away with this people and God. And what we've seen is they don't want to get rid of their sin. They have not repented at Jeremiah. They're not going to repent under Ezekiel. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day. And for the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night. Now these are the, these are the things that Israel has been worshipping. Which divide the sea when the waves are of roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Creator. Genesis 1. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord. The sun doesn't give off his light no more. If the moon don't give off her light, and the stars don't give off their light, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me. It's, it's always going to happen. You say, well, what about when the, when the sun goes dark and the moon goes blood and the stars are light? Yeah, but the sun, S-O-N, will come. With the moon, the type of the church, right behind it. It says in Daniel something about the ones that win souls are like stars of a crown. Something like that. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured. Alright, let's try this one now. So can you measure the heaven? You know, if you send a rocket ship or a satellite... To go as far as deep into the universe it can get. By the time it got to the far as deep, if the Lord tarried, there would be people on this planet would wouldn't even know what you'd done. It would be forgotten. Well, what was that blip we got? I, I don't know. 
Did that thing ever return what it's supposed to return back? We may not even be speaking English no more to understand our own technology. And the foundation of the earth search out beneath. Can you go find the foundation of the earth? You know how many miners dig under the ground and coal and diamonds and all that? Have they ever found the foundation of the earth? No. And God says you can. I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all they have done, saith the Lord. So if you can measure, that's what NASA is trying to do. We're trying to measure the earth so God will give up on his Bible and prophecy and his people. If we could measure the earth, uh, measure the earth and find the foundations thereof, we can walk in the United States and say, we've got victory over the Jews. Let's go slaughter them all. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord, from the tower of Heniel unto the gate of the corner. They're going to build for the Lord. And the measuring line shall yet go forth over against it upon the hill, Gear, Gear, and shall compass surround and circle about Goel. The whole valley of the dead bodies and the ashes in all the fields, unto the book of Kidron, unto the corner of the horse gate toward the east, shall be holy unto the Lord. That's not today. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down any more forever. There's coming a time that there will be never any more wars, missiles, scuds, anything. Tax, armies, air force, navy, marines, coast guard. It will be any nothing like that anymore in the land of Israel. But that's not right now. That's not going to happen under a king. That is not going to happen under a pope. That is not going to happen under a president. That is not going to happen under a premier. That is not going to happen under a queen. That is not going to happen under a prime minister. That is not going to happen under a sinning man. That is going to be a sinning man that is sinless. That is the beloved son of God will bring this in only. That's the only way.